Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us. We are back with another amazing interview. Now make sure that you are locked in, that you have your notification bell set. Catch us every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's 8 p.m. Central Time. Today we have the amazing Miss Pamela. Pamela, how are you? I am so happy and grateful to be on in this space. Thank you so much for uh, for inviting me. And for those who are watching, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So now, when was it that you bumped into me online? Okay, this is kind of interesting. So you know, YouTube, you'll get uh, like, it would just be somebody would just kind of come on your feed. And I saw you and I didn't really respond. I'm like, oh, okay. Something told me just to kind of click because I had no idea who you were. So when I clicked on one of your, uh, one of your, you know, one of your YouTube, uh, you know, uh, topics, I'm like, oh my goodness. And I, it, something about your demeanor, I just think it's God. It was so endearing. And you, you know, then your Southern accent. I was so I'm like, I like him. And I started watching you for your relationship advice. And it really resonated with me since I am in the space of rotational dating for marriage. I am, uh, I am, a, I'm divorced. So I started watching you for the relationship advice. And after maybe about a month or two, I did take the course, the marriage uh, kingdom wife. I took that course. And when I was, after I took the course, I was on my couch and it just dawned on me. I said, Mr. Gaskins, I would love for him to be my coach. And from there, I started crying and I knew that it was just like an epiphany. And, and then I, I still obviously love the relationship advice that you give, but now I'm in the space of, of wanting my, my coaching business to come and to reach others who, who, love, who love the support and the help. Right. So now, how long were you married? I, I was married, actually, I was with my ex-husband for 15 years. We were married for 13 years. And uh, we end up, in terms of our household, separated in 2018. So I have been on this healing journey uh, for five years and discovering who I really am in Christ, who I've always been, but I just didn't know until now. Mm, that's that's amazing. And the reason why I ask that, because there are a lot of women going through that, that transition yes. and finding themselves, like rediscovering themselves. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people can relate to because from what I've heard and experienced in coaching is it's not the easiest thing. So for you, what has been one of the toughest things about transitioning from being married and having that type of life to, you know, restarting and resetting? Yeah. Uh, when you get married, you know, I, my parents, they'll be celebrating their 40, Oh goodness, their 49th wedding anniversary. We don't get married to, you know, thinking that we're going to divorce. So I love, I love marriage. I love the sanctity of marriage. And I, there was just a time where in 2018, uh, what shifted for me was the belief in what I deserve as a, as a wife and what God had for me. So at that time, I didn't know that there was so much more. So, and I have a son at this time, at the time my son was 11. Now he's just turned 17. Um, but in that time in 2018, I weighed 275 pounds. So when I did transition and when I decided, when God put on my heart to leave, I didn't know, I didn't plan on leaving. But when I did leave a year after that in 2019 at 275, that's when I went on my, on my uh, transformation, on my physical, on my physical transformation. And when I lost, 140 pounds naturally in less than a year or less than two years. So it's been a lot the last five years. So mm. I'm really grateful. Mm. And now having that type of, you know, weight loss, but even, you know, getting to that point, what do you think led to that high point of, I think you said 270? You know, 275. What, what led to it? Was it just complacency in life or in marriage, stress? Mr. Gaskins, okay, this I think it's so interesting when someone, they could be a little heavier. Let's say 200, 230 pounds. I'm only five, two and a half. So when someone would say, I want to lose 50 pounds, I want to get back to my high school skinny. My high school skinny was a size 20. I've never been a small woman. I mean, from elementary age, middle school, I've always been a heavy woman. So me being in this body is it's nothing but God. So Okay, in 2019 in July, I'm going to show you this picture. I don't know if everybody can see it. Hopefully you can't see it. Everybody, thank you for being on with me. In this picture right here, I was 275 pounds. On that morning, I felt, I felt cute because I didn't know anything. 
I just knew me being a big woman. That's what I accepted. That evening, I think that's where the miracle happened. The belief. I saw this picture. Even though I've been heavy my whole life, I knew that in that moment, this picture of me being 275 was not who I was. So my belief system and who I was literally switched that, that it was like an on off switch. I immediately decided to make nutritional changes. And I know that this is not everybody's journey. I know that you're going to probably wake up and have like a come to Jesus moment where you just decided to just go, but that's where I'm here. So I'm the miracle. God sent me here to be of service. So I decided to, like, so I didn't know that I was going to lose 140 pounds. I didn't know. You may not know either, but just have hope and faith that you are you know, you're deserving to, to feel healthy. So with that being said, my belief system literally switched overnight. I'll, I'll be honest, on that night before my, my, my lifestyle changed, I went to 7-Eleven. I got two taquitos, a bag of Doritos, some donuts. I got my juice. Uh, so after that, my belief system shifted. And then I, I decided to make major nutritional uh, changes. But I know that that's not going to be everybody's journey because what we think is not a matter of what's on our plate. It's, it's not the number on the scale. It really comes down to what we believe. What do we believe to be true? What are we telling ourselves 24 hours? We, we live in our minds and our bodies and our spirits. We have us. What, what stories are we telling ourselves that we think is true for programming? That's not true. I didn't know that I was going to be here in this space. God brought me here. And I, I just, he brought me here to be a service. I didn't know. Now I do know. So it's our, it's our thoughts. What are we thinking? Why are we stressed? Why, why are we... Why are we dealing with, how do we deal with stress when we are upset with maybe a, a, a failed, like a, a failed marriage? You know, when we, our, our child got a DUI, there's so many things that are out of our, that's out of our control and we do succumb to self-soothing. You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm kind of a square, but food, that's my, I know that, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I know me being 310 pounds in my heaviest, food is, is an addiction. And I'm just, God just put me in a space where I'm really controlling it. And mm -hmm. I want the same for you. Mm -hmm. I do. So you made that decision and you had to kind of create a plan. Now, what was that like creating the plan, like getting the knowledge? Like, where did you okay. go for the knowledge and how did, you, yes. how did you start to learn your body and what you could eat and like what process did you put in place? Hey, so I'll be honest. I joined, uh, there was a friend of mine on Facebook and she's like losing weight. She's eating her peppers and her eggs and cream cheese. Um, she's losing a little bit of weight. I'm like, hey, you looking, you looking good. But what got me was she, at her heaviest, she was 305 pounds. She put a before and after picture. At her heaviest, she was 305 pounds. At her, I guess, at, the, at her body weight, her comfortable body weight, she was 170 pounds. When I tell you, Mr. Gaskins, I didn't care. I just said, what did you do? What did you do? And she uh, ended up inviting me to, there was a small group of women and it was pretty, it was a really wonderful group, but it was more so, this is the list. Eat this, not that, drink your gallon of water. It was very, very straightforward. I was so hungry for change. I just stuck to it. I just said, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. So I decided to release, and this is for me. I decided in that moment or in that month, just for the month, I didn't see me losing. I just said, just let me, I, I have arthritis in my left knee. I was just tired of my left knee hurting. I was on a cane at 39 because my knee was swollen. It was too much weight. I just wanted my left knee to stop hurting. So with that being said, I decided to make major nutritional changes. So I drank my gallon of water, released the sugar and the grains, the processed foods. I'm going to fast foods restaurants, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, McDonald's, you know, my friend. I decided to really do an upheaval and let it go. In that first month, I lost 14 pounds. So it was a group of women and we just were on that, that journey together. So with that being said, I did just challenge after challenge, month after month. Like I lost 13 pounds this first month, second second month, 10 pounds. Mind you, I have a lot of weight to lose. So with that being said, within a hundred, within a less than two year period, I lost 140 pounds. And to, to glory be to God, here I am. Mm. So you cut out fast food. Did you go to any specific diet like vegan vegetarian oh, or th that's a great question thank you mr gaskins what i end up doing so with the lifestyle change it's a high fat lifestyle change so I, a lot of people maybe would, would they'll think oh is it is it similar to keto I, I call it keto sloppy little sister it's a little bit more cleaner than keto keto has a higher uh, fat percentage we don't i don't believe for me personally because i do have a food addiction i don't do well with moderation so i know there's di different keto snacks ah i'll eat five keto snacks you know, what position am I in now? So no, so I end up like, so I eat a high fat lifestyle. So I eat um, all kinds of various meats. So I eat pretty much meats, nuts, eggs, seafood, vegetables. 
uh, fruits, berries that are lower in sugar, they have a lower sugar uh, index. Drink my gallon of water and I get sleep. No exercise. That's why I also want, I'm, oh, ladies and gentlemen, if you aren't on here, we, like, we have been kind of bamboozled about our health. I lost 140 pounds. With, how about this? I didn't even incorporate light yoga and Pilates until I lost 100 pounds. I totally wanted to just focus on my nutrition. And sometimes we get so much thrown at us. Drink your gallon of water. Write your gratitude journal. And a lot of times we get so overwhelmed. We end up doing nothing. And then we end up going back to our old habits. Just do little. So I just wanted to focus on my nutrition. Let me focus on that. And then I incorporated light yoga and Pilates um, when I was like 100 and maybe 10 pounds. And I still stick with that. So small changes, and I have faith in you. You can do it. Now, has your ex-husband tried to come back after the, the weight loss, or he just like, or did he like, because he met you as a, you know, a larger yeah. one. Mm -hmm. And so that must was his preference, you know. Yes. I, I see that with some guys, and but now that you're in a new body, does he treat you different? Does he see you different? Or it, or did you have any other ex-lovers before him that, you know, have seen you? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I am very, I like to say, I, I date, but I, I'm celibate anyway. I don't know, that's a whole other topic. But uh, no, with my ex-husband, and since my family, they saw me lose this weight naturally, and they saw me every day, so they didn't really know, I mean, they noticed it, but it would be like a complete stranger. I still see certain people in the same eyes. So when I'm like, it's Pamela, they're like, Pammy, Pamela who? So they get thrown off. But in terms of my ex-husband, he didn't meet me when I was a big woman. And when I lost weight years ago, um, he still treated me the same, whether I was 300 pounds or at the time, but even when I left, I was 275. So he saw me lose weight a little bit, but not obviously to this magnitude because I didn't go on my journey until after we decided to, uh, go our separate ways but mm. everyone yes yes now, now did getting a divorce have anything to do with going on the journey or did no, it just was totally self-started actually i think in the beliefs if we think all everything starts that's why i, I okay so after I, I lost weight my family friends they reached out they said whatever you're doing it's working so i didn't know what to do i just gave them eat this not that you know list and they did lose the weight but then they even kind of gained it back and i didn't understand why didn't they keep it off and so i ended up going to i ended up going to school through health coach institute and now i understand the belief and how, how our belief and what we were programmed to believe to be true so i know that there's so much with belief and mindset shift that like for example for my 30 day for my total mind body transformation rejuvenation 30 day course I don't even even hint on nutrition to the third week. We really get with the mindset and what are we thinking? What how do we view ourselves? What thoughts are we saying that make our reality more of what we don't want? Why are we stuck in this cycle of doing things in our in our lives and our in our bodies that we know that we don't want? I mean, you know, we are fully functioning human beings. We are spiritual beings. We are children of God having a human experience. We know what to do, but sometimes we don't do it. So why why are we getting stuck? Why was I stuck for 39 years? I have to do a lot of therapy and research so I can understand me, so I can be of service to others. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question or not, Mr. Gaskins. Hopefully I did. No, yes, yes, you did. And oh. I, I can, I could feel your passion. I could tell that you're excited and you just kind of, you know, you getting out there into this space. And that takes a lot of courage. That takes a lot of boldness. And I know that it's inspiring others without you having to, you know, force it on them. They could see it in you and see like, okay, she stepped out there after she made a change. I'm making a change. So it's ministry in several different ways. And mm -hmm. that's something that is very important. One of the things I want to touch on, because you said, even from a young age, you know, mm -hmm. you had a different physique, you know, and mm -hmm. that was, and you come from a two parent household, correct? Yes. My parents and, are, uh, they're both ministers and they're a lovely, lovely family. And I noticed that a lot of times in two parent homes where the child, were you an only child or did you have siblings? Oh my word, Mr. Gaskins and everyone. I am a big family. I have six sisters and three brothers. Okay. And I, and I, I noticed that sometimes with the stable homes, cause my oldest son was like that as well. You know, he, he loves food and he would eat and he, you know, always kind of struggled with his weight. Now he's found his body. He has an eight pack of abs. Yes. And right. I don't, I haven't been able to connect it. Is it just 
more availability to food? Is it more of the child just the parents loving their child through food? Like mm. the more I feed you, the more I love you. Oh, yeah. You know, so have you yeah. been back into mm -hmm. the childhood behaviors and try to identify like, okay, how did this start? Where did this how come from? Because if you could be in this body, then you could have mm -hmm. had this body all yes. along. Yes. Have you, thank, how do you feel about that? Thank you, Mr. Gaskins. That thank you for us kind of doing a deep dive into our childhood. Girl, why do I have this propensity for cheese bread? So I, every I've noticed that even as a young, as it, I'm not trying to say everyone has vices. Um, you have some people who self-soothe maybe through gambling or to or drinking or with other escapist activities. I had a lovely family, but I just remember even at a young age, this fascination with food. I love the way it tastes. I love it. So even though I'm full, I want another ice cream cone. I want another ice cream sandwich. So there was this, always this, um, this void that I wanted. That I, even though I said I had a lovely family and support system, in my, I always wanted to fill the void. And now after God is working with me and I'm, I'm it's like every day is a battle because even though I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 140, 140 pounds, I still have the stomach of the bit. I, I didn't have any surgery. So let me tell you, I look under the right circumstances. If I was stressed out and if, if I didn't check my emotions and to figure out and go do a deep dive in why I have a craving, oh, I can still eat probably a linebacker under a table. But I have to really dig deep with what's going on with me emotionally, the reason why I want to go and eat more than a slice or two with pizza. It's not out of hunger. So that means if you're eating out, out, out of sight, you know, if you want to fuel your, your body and, you know, we, you know, we're human, you have to eat to live, but if you're to the point where you're living to eat, I think a lot of it deals with our stress and how we deal with our level of stress, which I'm so grateful that, um, my program really dealt, we, we, we kind of dig, dig deep and our level of awareness, our behavior, what are we telling ourselves? What do we think to be true? If your belief in which is true for me, my belief was I'm a big girl. That's just how it is. My belief was I'm going to be in this, I'm going to be in this marriage. You know, this is life. This is till death do us part. So our belief does shape our experiences and our thoughts. And we end up going and succumbing to the same, um, doing the same things that we don't want to do. And we feel stuck. I feel stuck. It's like I said, even though I'm a, I feel more connected to being a big woman than being small. I've been small for five seconds. I've been a big woman 39 years. So my heart, my passion is to help black women um, who suffer and who are still trying to figure it out and get out of that gray area. And I know that I also dealt with almost like depression where I got up, I went to work, took care of my son, paid bills. I didn't stay in the bed all day, but I, I didn't know that I was unhappy until God released me. I'm like, oh, it's like the birds were singing, the angels were singing, like this is happiness to feel this way like okay it's possible for me you are possible you are possible we are possible mm -hmm. so now what has this led you I think I heard you mention of course what products or services did have you created that you provide to help others yes okay so I have actually two courses I have the total mind body transformation rejuvenation it's a 90 day program now the 90 days you're getting a whole lot of, you're getting a whole lot of me. So pretty much I'm on with you week by week. Uh, I do, I don't like saying homework. It's homework, you know, we, we're inundated with homework through high school, college and beyond. It's inner work. So I do activities with my clients and uh, it's very personal and it's deep. You know, I, I, I they, they get my, my, the raw version of me unfiltered and uncovered and just totally vulnerable. And I create that space where we're sharing, but also we're just kind of delving deep into their behaviors because if I, I, as a coach, my job is not to get the results. My job is not to get you, give you an eat this, not that list. I go into your behavior and habit. If I can, if I can somehow facilitate habit change in your be belief, your beliefs and your mindset, oh, guys, we don't have any limits. So I have a, a 90 day program. However, if you feel as if that seems like a big jump, and if you don't want to do the night, the 90 day course, I have a 30 day course, which is on my website. And it's so phenomenal. I mean, so it's a total mind, body transformation, rejuvenation, 30 day course. It's like you tip, you're dipping your toe into, into what it's like really working with me. Uh, really just every, just, just seeing the results and, and knowing what you deserve and having that freedom. So it's like a lot of, it's, it's health coaching, but it's life coaching too. 
And I'm excited. Like I said, we don't even hit on nutrition to the third week. The first two weeks, we're kind of going into, oh gosh, there's so many activities. Oh, it's a, it's a juicy program. There's, uh, there's meditations, there's journaling, you know, but it's, it's work, but you're worth it. You are so worth it. Because my thing is up until when I decided to make changes in my relationship, in my marriage, that opened up for me to focus on my nutrition. And then from there, that it, it expanded my world in so many ways and so many opportunities. Like Mr. Gaskins, I didn't see myself here with you in 2019. And I'll be honest, I wasn't, I didn't, that's now I know my purpose. Women, black women are my purpose and they're my why. That's what's giving me the, the fuel to keep going, just to keep going. I didn't see, I just wanted my left knee to, to stop hurting. I just didn't want to wake up and, and I, it's not a matter of if, but when I was going to get type two diabetes. I wanted to be around to take care of my child. It had to, it, it hurt. Okay, now I'll be even vulnerable. I'll just say this. It came a time where with my food addiction, this is so sad, but I'm gonna be real. My son, let's say I made lasagna or I made spaghetti. And if he didn't finish his food and let's say he put the his little leftovers like on the top of the garbage. In my mind, where did we throw away that food? Uh-uh. I would actually take his food, his, his leftovers and eat his leftovers out of the garbage. If that's not low, like, I, I, that's what I thought I deserved. That's how out, out of control my food addiction was. My son, he started actually hiding his food from me, his snacks, because he knew that his mommy was going to eat his snacks. So it, it was so it was this picture right here when I saw myself thinking about the trauma that I could have eaten, I even, that caused my son. And, you know, we had to go to therapy, you know, but you have to want it. You have to want it bad enough. You're worth it. You are so worth it. We are worth it. We are children of God. Now, have you been able to spend or or do you still do therapy and like talk to a therapist to kind of oh. for you to better understand of like okay where did, what's the root of this addiction like did I feel overlooked and unheard because I have six siblings or was I just because we do understand that when we eat we have a chemical release from our brain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we do have though the oxytocin or the dopamine and it yes. is feel good feeling yes. and like if we're not getting that from a video game or from a sport then the food becomes the video game and the sport yes and, and I feel like that sometimes because of our childhood experiences, it could take us a while to really get to the root of it and discovering ourselves and, and really understanding it as at the same time while we're helping others. So how has that been for you? Like the therapy side of things and just like oh, learning yourself, you know, oh. Oh, yes, we are always work in progress. So for me to continue to, my, this is all new to me and almost like really me, you know, going from a, a caterpillar all these years to a butterfly. So therapy is so, so important for me to still make these connections and having these moments where of transparency where I'll, let's say I'll, I'll talk to my therapist about a certain situation in my childhood and they're just there almost shining a light to certain things maybe that I missed. So certain things will click to me. So with that being said, Yes, I still do have therapy so I can still be, be a service because like I said, coming from a two parent home, my parents, you know, my, my dad, you know, he's, um, he has a doctor in education, just a, a lovely family. And somehow I was, I still end up succumbing to how, I, how I self soothe and my, and my stress and how I dealt with my stress and honestly feeling undeserving, the feeling as if I didn't deserve to be in a healthy body. Or I didn't deserve to have a beautiful, you know, marriage. So, oh yes, there's a lot of unlearning and unpacking. I see. And yes. do you have, how would you like individuals to contact you by a uh, website or email? Like what's oh, the yes. best way if someone wants to reach out for coaching? Yes. The best way to reach out to me. So uh, I have, my website is called Pamela's Butterfly Life com and uh if you feel this resonates with you uh if you feel as if you just want to just try this believe you me i tried so many i tried so many times just know that if this feels right for you you can reach out uh reach out to me on my website pamela's butterfly life you can also reach out to me on facebook pamela's butterfly life youtube pamela's butterfly life and i'm also i'm in the uh i am in the beginning stages of uh, formulating my book, and it's called Fat Like Me, My Journey from a Caterpillar to a Fly. So I'm really grateful. I'm so happy. That's amazing. And I know that 
this is something where some people find themselves in that space later. Some people yes. it, like yourself, it's, it's been a, a lifelong journey of, you know, dealing with the weight issues, but I'm finding that it is a big issue with women today. And I feel like from what I've seen, it's more so with women than it is with men. Mm -hmm. Although there are many men who struggle, but I'm noticing it is becoming more common amongst women just because of for one body composition. Naturally, you know, a woman's mm -hmm. body is composed differently than a man's. But then also, like you said, the self-soothing part of it. If yes. a woman is not happy with her relationship status and being single or being overworked and underpaid, then food becomes the bestie. It becomes the best mm -hmm. friend. So oh, yes. I really believe your work is very necessary and it really can help a lot of people. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, you have a, a flood of people reaching out to you and to learn and just see like what you're doing and see if it works for them and their lifestyle and their body. And I would definitely recommend and, or maybe if they need the help, would you be able to help them just even going on Google and finding a local person, like a doctor they could talk to if they need to go get some labs done, or if they, you know, need to do this to kind of create a program yeah. Are you willing to, you know, do that with your clients to say like, okay, hey, here's this, here's this, and then this is what I do, but you also need this oh. on the team and need that on the team. Is that oh. something that you can provide? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Gaskins, because just be you know, I'm a health and life coach. Doctor, so I would never, like, for example, I would never give someone, like, I think there was a video, Mr. Gaskins, that you, I think it was very interesting. You said, what works for, what works for you? I think you do really well, with, maybe with protein, might not work for another person. So I would never tell someone, okay, have a high fat lifestyle. Someone probably had gallbladder surgery, and they can't have a high fat lifestyle. So with that being said, I will definitely, uh, you know, tell, tell my clients to please reach out to your healthcare provider. And I'm just here really as a, as a coach to cheer you on and to give you just to be there to, to, to shy, kind of show your own body's wisdom. If you listen to your body, but definitely uh, listen to your, your doctor and can, we can formulate a program that suits whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, because it doesn't matter what, how you, you know, you uh, feel your body. It just really comes down to what you believe about yourself to be true. Right. And stress, our level of stress and how we, we, are, we deserve a life of beauty and love. We mm. really do. You're right. I thank you so much. And it is it's so amazing to see like the transformation. And when you hear a story that is like beyond belief. Right. And like to yes. see that. And because it's like I, it's hard to see that that's the same person like, whoa, this. But also to see you know, the beauty underneath, you know, the beauty within, meaning no matter what space you're in, knowing that you can become you know, who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people assume that because they're this size, they're only meant to be that size. And they're like, hey, if I lose weight, I'm going to look like a skeleton or I'm going to look unnatural. Mm -hmm. But it's like, Looking at you here, looking at you now, you can't tell that you were ever meant to be anything other than how you look now. Like you look completely normal. Like no, some people, they'll lose weight in a bad way. And then they look what people call sick or yes, yes. but you look completely normal. Like this is your God designed intended body. And I think that's great for people to see, to know that okay, yes, all of this, I'm big boned or I'm supposed mm -hmm, to, it's, mm -hmm. it, a lot of times it's just choices Yes, and, and not really God's design for us to be 400, 350, 300, yes. you know, that's not truly the design. And if we change our choices, then we get to see how we're truly supposed to be designed. So with you making different choices, you're in a whole nother design now. And, and that's a great connector for me yes. and everyone else. So thank you for that. Thank, thank you, Mr. So Gaskins. But just because I was in this body for 39 years, this is not, this is not, I mean, it took me 39 years to get here and everyone has a journey and a story to tell, but this is not 
how it has to be. And I think a lot of the times we we get we we get afraid. I guess I have to be willing to let go of this of this Pamela so I can be be this Pamela. And it is scary. Change is scary. And guys, we want to say this too. Sometimes when we do want change. We have things in our mind and it does logically make sense. The paradigms. Well, I have to go figure out, you know, I got to check it out with my husband. I don't know if I have time. We can be make these barriers because we're afraid. We're afraid and that's okay to be afraid. I say, go, go anyways. Mm -hmm. I'm a, honestly, Mr. Gaston, I was a little bit nervous even doing this interview. Go anyways. There's growth. There's growth in, in almost not knowing. Mm -hmm. There's growth. That's amazing. And you know what? I'm glad you stepped out there. It was good for people to, to see. And I believe that it's more in the seeing too, and not just the knowing of, hey, I got this person who can help me, but them seeing you get out your comfort zone mm -hmm. and go from who you were to who you are. And even doing this, this interview and as, and as uncomfortable as it may be, just pressing through. So Thank you so much, Pamela, and we really appreciate you. To everyone who is watching this, Ms. Pamela's information is in the description box. So please, if you feel that you are in need, reach out to her, have a session, make it happen, and let's make changes together. And lastly, set your notification bell and be here for our next interview as well. Pamela, thank you so much. Mr. Gaskins, why I say I appreciate you. I thank God for you. And for the for whoever of you, just know that I'm praying for you and I'm thinking about you. And you can do this. You're a butterfly. Fly. You got this. Fly. Thank you. Thank you. Care.